Hey now, welcome to 3 by 5 with Steve Bennett. My name is Steve Bennett. This is episode five, uh, five of these already blazing through. Thanks to the North-South Connection for having me on their YouTube page. You can find all five episodes of this right here on this YouTube stream. If you can subscribe or like or comment, that always helps with the algorithms and we appreciate that. Uh, three new lists for you today, one in pop culture, one in sports, one in wrestling. Like we do always, we did a 90s edition, we did an 80s edition, we're just back to normal uh, today. One of the things that we're going to have to do as we go forward to keep things fresh is to really vary the lists and what the lists are about, and I'd love your help. If there's anything you'd like to see me do a top five list on an episode of 3 by 5 throw it in the comments or hit me up on Twitter at sports underscore casters or wherever, and maybe I can do a list sponsored by you. For today, though, it's the normal sponsors, and we'll start with the 24-inch podcast uh, sponsoring uh, the wrestling list. And I wanted to do something totally different that I've done so far. So these are the top five matches, not in the WWE. These are my favorite matches of all time, all eras, not under Vince McMahon's WWF slash WWE. Let's kick it off now. All right, number five, familiar face here, Hulk Hogan. Pins Ric Flair at Halloween Havoc 1994 in Detroit, Michigan. And I just watched this for the first time uh, to do some prep for the 24-inch podcast. Uh, The next episode, episode 40 of 24-inch podcast, is going to be this night. And this very much feels like a main event at a WWF pay-per-view. I felt at home, you know, uh, it it didn't seem like a a stretch here that it could have been on the other network. It's Hulk Hogan being Hulk Hogan doing his Hulk Hogan thing, and very much doing what these two guys should have done at WrestleMania 8. Instead, it's Halloween Havoc 94, two years later, in Detroit, number five. Number four, one of my passions uh, at the end of high school and in college was going to see ECW at the Burt Flickinger Center in downtown Buffalo. I went almost every time they came, including this pay-per-view. November to remember, on November 7, 1999, at the Flickinger Center. Um, a lot of matches that were good to choose from. I went with RVD over Taz. Uh, Taz was my favorite. I loved his entrances uh, to the Kiss song, War Machine. And uh, RVD kind of is ECW to me. I love being at these events. Had so much fun with my friends going to see ECW. It's something that is captured in time. You can never duplicate it. It was the, f- the perfect group of guys for the perfect time in the perfect places like the ECW arena and the Burt, Burt Flickinger Center. I was one time on the phone, on the pay phone, talking to my mom, letting her know, yeah, we're at ECW, we'll be home late, leave the back door open kind of thing, pre-cell phones. And next to me was um, New Jack on the phone, talking to one of his baby mamas. So, fun moment. Only could happen at ECW, right? I don't think there's many stories of people at WWF events uh, next to Bad News Brown on a pay phone. Maybe, but... I don't know. Uh, Number three, Dusty Rhodes pins Ric Flair for the NWA title at the Great American Bash in 1986. Uh, When I was a kid, my parents were divorced, and I would go to my dad's house. I'd be there on the weekends, which is actually my grandma's house. And uh, I would watch on TBS. I would watch 605 show on Saturday nights. And I was super into this Dusty Rhodes, Ric Flair feud that they had going. And I was super into the promos they cut in the studio, and I very much wanted Rhodes to uh, to win the belt over Flair. I didn't get to see the match of the Great American Bash on pay-per-view, and um, I didn't see it probably for, for years besides what they showed on TBS because back then my WCW watching was confined to TBS and also the magazines, the after mags in the uh, grocery stores. And I remember when they finally had the cover and I finally knew – and got to read more about Dusty winning that match, um, which is available, of course, now on the network, and it's definitely worth a watch. Number two, maybe my favorite ECW match of all time. Well, it is, if you trust the list. Bam Bam Bigelow defeats Taz at Living Dangerously 1998 in Asbury Park, New Jersey. This is right before maybe the most iconic moment in ECW history as uh, Bam Bam is going to backdrop Taz through the ring and then pull his 
the lifeless carcass out and pin him for the victory. This is in Asbury Park, which is where Bam Bam is from. It's a pro Bam Bam crowd. Taz at the peak of his powers in ECW. You know, Bam Bam, the face that reemerges from WWF. Just an unbelievable clash of titans here with a perfect finish. A wow moment. Something that was worthy of the holy shit chance it got from the ECW crowd. And only one better. And that is number one, Ricky Steamboat defeats Ric Flair. Best two out of three. Class of Champions 6, April 2nd, 1989, which is also a significant day for other reasons. I picked this match because Steamboat wins. I wanted to pick one of the Steamboat matches he wins in the feud. Obviously, there was three. There was actually a fourth one that Meltzer gave six stars to in Maryland. I've never seen it. Uh, But the three main ones that he gave five stars to all three uh, were in Memphis, Chicago, and New Orleans. This is the New Orleans one. Um, An unbelievable match. Best two out of three falls. Uh, Steamboat remains champion these guys together is magic uh these matches are magic if you haven't seen steamboat and flair 89 watch it uh it's great and they'll even tell you that they had matches in the 70s they think were better i mean i think rick flair said he had no greater opponent throughout his career than steamboat and steamboat i'm sure has said the same uh to me it's not as good as steamboat savage but i guess i just come from a different place in a different time but this is great. Unbelievably great. Uh, and I recommend it. My top five favorite non-WWF matches. Hogan over Flair at Halloween Havoc 94. Uh, RVD over Taz at November to Remember 99. Dusty Rhodes over Ric Flair at Great American Bash 1986. Bam Bam Bigelow defeats Taz after going through the ring. Living Dangerously 98. And then Steamboat defeats Flair. Class of Champions 6. April 2nd, 1989. You know what this was going against, brother. All right, next list. Let's do sports next. This is uh, sponsored by the Sportscasters at sports underscore casters. It's summertime, uh, which means I like to do some fun stuff on the Sportscasters, like interview Andy Green from Rolling Stone about Motley Crue and rock and roll and the future of rock and roll. And I did that yesterday. I'll be on a future episode of the Sportscasters. Uh, Check that out. For all information about the Sportscasters, at sports underscore casters. All right, let's get to the list. The top five sports moments of the decade so far. On number five, uh, number uh, TCU defeats Michigan 51 45 in the 2023 college football semifinal. The Big 12 needed this win, you know. <laughs> Somebody from the Big 12 needed to get a win in the college football playoff. And, uh, you know, Oklahoma couldn't get it. Although they should have won that Georgia game, uh, Baker Mayfield blew they they blew that game. I still can't believe they lost it. They could have been champions that year, uh, but they blew that game. And and what a way to get the win! Sean McDonough was on the call here, the great Sean McDonough on ESPN, and just an unbelievable game with a wild finish, controversial calls, booth reviews. Just this game had everything, um, and uh, but uh, there was nothing left for the final. Unfortunately, as Georgia, I think, won 300 to 7 in the final. Uh, but a great job by LSU or TCU uh, to get to get a win for the Big 12, number five. Number four, the USA beats Canada to win gold at the 2021 World Juniors. They win the game two to nothing. There's uh, Zegras now with the Ducks. Uh, this was an important win for Team USA. They hadn't won a gold at World Junior in a few years. Coming out of the pandemic. Um, I think a lot of these games were still played to empty arenas. Maybe not all of them. I don't remember exactly. This is in Canada. It was a very good Canadian team. They had sort of chopped their way through the tournament. And the USA was a a big underdog going into this game. But they were the better team throughout the game. They didn't steal it by any means. They got two goals early, maybe hung on late. But a very important gold medal for Team USA at the World Junior uh, over Christmas time. Uh, coming out of the pandemic, this was big. Uh, they, had, they had not done very well in the one that was in the summer, um, which was the postponement of the original. Uh, but this this year was a big win for USA Hockey. Uh, USA Hockey this year have won the uh, under-18s. 
Uh, so let's see if they can win the, the World Juniors next year. But really good, strong performance. A great game. Anytime USA beats Canada in Canada for a gold, it's on the list. All right, number three, I got to be careful here. All right, I got to be careful because I want the people to love me, to still love me. Uh, but number three is 13 seconds. Probably don't need to say any more than that. Kansas City over Buffalo, 42-36 in overtime. Uh, Josh Allen won the game a few different times, uh, but his defense couldn't hold it. And he gave the ball back to Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes with 13 seconds off. What could go wrong? Uh, well, they didn't squib kick it, and Mahomes got all 13 seconds from the 25, and the Bills played 50 yards off, and dink, 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 field goal. They go to overtime. Uh, Chiefs win the toss and then win it on the drive. They actually changed the rule because of this game. Now in the playoffs, each offense gets at least one drive in overtime. Um, sort of like when the Saints won the NFC Championship game by a field goal over the Vikings and Favre didn't get on the field, they changed the rule to what they have during the regular season now where each offense gets one possession as long as there's a TD isn't scored or safety, you know, the way it is now. They changed this as well for the Bills. Look at, I watched this game at home alone, obviously. Uh, my wife and my daughter, we watched it. And I don't know that we were cheering for or against the Bills. We weren't cheering for the Bills. But I don't know if we were cheering against them. It was a game where you didn't need to have a side. It was just unbelievable to watch the drama play out. Um, and it was fantastic. Um, you know, a historic stadium like Arrowhead, a generational player like Patrick Mahomes, dueling against a generational player like Josh Allen, back and forth, back and forth. Gabe Davis breakout. I think he had four touchdowns. Uh, but in the end, the defense just couldn't hold. And Mahomes and uh, the Chiefs went on to lose the next week to Cincinnati, which really bothers Bills fans because they feel like they would have beat Cincinnati and Buffalo the next week and went to the Super Bowl. And who knows if that's as close as they'll get with Josh Allen yet to be seen. All right, number two, the Atlanta Braves win the 2021 World Series. Uh, they beat the Astros. Uh, they got over the hump that was the Dodgers. Uh, the year before, they had a 3-1 lead over the Dodgers in the NLCS, and they blew the lead. Dodgers went on to win the World Series against Tampa. Uh, this time, the Braves got the lead and, and finished the Dodgers off. I think the Dodgers were guilty of being exhausted from a pennant race. They had to go to the last day with the Giants. I think it was 104 to 103, something like that. Giants and, and, and Dodgers had unbelievable seasons. Then they had to play a best of five in the division round. The Braves had a much easier path to the LCS. Maybe had more gas in the tank. They finished off the Dodgers. Then they beat the Astros in six games. Um, the Braves team currently might be the best Braves team ever. But this Braves team has a ring. We'll see if the 2023 Braves can match them or not. But uh, this was great. You know, again, the World Series is back in front of fans. The 2020 World Series was in a bubble. That sucked. Uh, this was much better. Fans in the stands and, and Georgia and Texas. Really good stuff. Good World Series uh, that the Braves win um, in six games. All right. Number one, Italy uh, defeats England at Wembley to become European champions. They got the sticker here. Um, look at when sports stopped in 2020. Um, I left sports and I had a real hard time coming back when they did. I wasn't interested very much. Uh, I wasn't interested very much in the, the bubble stuff. Um, they also came back at a time where the political climate was really hot and you couldn't just enjoy a ball game. There was a ball game plus a political backdrop that sometimes seemed more important. Um, and I just, you know, they went away. I found something else to do, and I just kept doing that. And sure, when the Saints season started, I knew I'd be there for it. I knew I'd watch Saints football. I did wa I did grind through that season in empty buildings, a painful season where I knew the Saints were never good enough. I knew the breeze was shot. 
um, and they lost to the Buccaneers in the playoffs and ended the Breeze era. I got through that, but I still wasn't back. I still didn't enjoy sports until this. This got me back. Italy played Turkey in the very first day of the tournament and won 3 nothing. And I interviewed a guy named John Champion who called a lot of these games for ESPN. And he told me, he said, Italy's got something. They got a chance to win this. And I think I told the story earlier on the first episode that my daughter was brought home from the hospital at the previous Euros five years before. This is the 2020 Euros played in 2021. But I watched this with my daughter. Um, it was a sports awakening. It was a cultural awakening for me. Uh, Italy won the semifinals in penalties. They beat England in Wembley in penalties. And the trophy was coming to Rome instead of coming home, like England proclaimed. Uh, there's a Kirby and a Jorginho. Uh, they're celebrating uh, with the championship. But an unbelievable, um, an unbelievable tournament. And, um, oh, man, I, I never felt as proud to be Italian as I did on this day in July of 2021. All right. TCU beats Michigan at five. USA beats Canada to win the World Junior. At four, Kansas City over the Bills, 20, 13 seconds. At three, the Braves win the World Series in 2021 at two. And Italy defeats England in penalties at Wembley to win the 2020 Euros in 2021, number one. All right, one more list. It's pop culture. Thanks to North-South Connection for sponsoring this one and having me on. It's summertime, and my daughter and I, we like to watch movies together, and we like to watch movies from the 80s or 90s. We watched Richie Rich the other day. It was cool. It was fine. Nothing great, whatever. Probably not as bad as people think it is. Uh, but uh, I said we should watch some baseball movies um, because it's baseball time. So how about a top five baseball movie list? Now, this is difficult to, to put in five, so I do have honorable mentions. And maybe I'll read those first. Uh, my honorable mentions were Little Big League, Rookie of the Year, Bull Durham, The Pride of the Yankees, The Natural, The Bad News Bears, and 61. Now, any of those could have been in the top five and were worthy of the top five. Uh, but I settled on this. The Sandlot. Oh, what a film this is. That mean son of a bitch of a dog. Took the ball. The kids. Benny the Jet. What a story. Um, this is youth. This is childhood. This is what baseball is all about. This is maybe what we're missing in society today. I live right down the street from these beautiful baseball diamonds. There's never anyone there. But uh, the Sandlot kids would be there. The Sandlot kids would be there and enjoying it. That's number five. Number four, uh, this is the sequel to Dazed and Confused. Um, Everybody Wants Some. Takes place at a, uh, a baseball house on a college campus with the baseball theme. And it's just like Dazed and Confused with the partying and the music. And, you know, this is a, the 80s. More, you know, this uh, Dazed and Confused is the 70s. This is more an 80s soundtrack, of course, named after a... Um, a uh, Van Halen song there. Everybody wants some. Uh, she kind of got that that party attitude. Uh, Richard Linklater. It's his film uh, to follow up. Dazed and Confused. Uh, really good stuff there. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Uh, number three, A League of Their Own. Tom Hanks, Gina Davis, Madonna is in it as well. I don't know if she's <laughs> comes to mind third, but obviously a huge star at the time. Look it. She dropped the ball on purpose. Okay. With all due respect to Katie Baker from The Ringer, who wrote a beautiful piece about why she didn't drop the ball. And I know you're going to say, why would she come back to play the game? Why would she go and tell the pitcher to throw her a high one? Because she always misses the high one. Why would she do that and then drop the ball on purpose? Listen. Listen. Kid hits the ball. She hits the hard one, the high one. She's going around the bases. And Gina Davis is standing there. Watching it all play out. Watching her sister run. Her sister finally hit that high pitch. And in her mind, she knows she's going home to her husband. She's going to start a family. She has everything the kid doesn't. And this is more important to her than it is to Gina Davis. And at the last second, she decides to let the ball go and let her have the moment. Baseball was never important to her. But this movie's unbelievable. So damn good. You know, the guys are off at war. Um, who's going to fill the baseball stadiums with the ladies? Uh, Gina Davis is beautiful in it, too. 
Um, really great characters, good twists, good comedy. Tom Hanks is great in it. This this movie could be one. It really could be. Uh, number two, another movie that could be one, uh, Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. The ultimate story of fathers and sons. And that's kind of what baseball is, right? Throwing the ball, having a catch with your dad. Uh, Kevin Costner is brilliant in this movie. Um, it's uh, it's unbelievable. I love the last few years. Major League Baseball has done the Field of Dreams games, uh, which have been great. I don't think they're doing one this year, um, but they'll be back, and they've been really good so far. Um, I love Field of Dreams. Some people, maybe it's not their thing. Uh, maybe they would have had, you know, Bull Durham here instead. I love Bull Durham too, uh, but I ha- already have a comedy at one, and that number one is Major League, which to me is the ultimate baseball movie. It's hilarious. It's got a great sports movie story. You know, the motivation, the the owner who wants to tank the team, the unbelievable characters, you know, Willie Mays Hayes, uh, Rick Wild Thing Vaughn. Uh, If you're going to pull this shit, at least you could have said you're from the Yankees. It's so quotable. Um, It has everything. And every major leaguer will tell you, if you ask a major league baseball player, what's the best baseball movie? This is what they say. Not Field of Dreams or Bull Durham or anything like that. Uh, this is the movie. Uh, Major League uh, gets gets my spot there for that, for sure. So top five baseball movies. The Sandlot at number five. Uh, Everybody Wants Some at number four. League of Their Own at number three. Uh, Field of Dreams at number two. And Major League at number one. All right. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, three by five with Steve Bennett. I'm Steve Bennett. That's episode five. I want to thank Ryan for producing. I want to thank Justin and Aaron and everyone at the North South Connection for having us. I want to thank you for watching and liking, subscribing and commenting and all those things I know you'll do for me so that we're not canceled like Young Rock thrown out at NBC and find a new project. So I'm waiting for him to tell me. Uh, we got through it a little quicker today. I want to start making some shorts. Hopefully I figure out how I'll look for those. Uh, but every Tuesday, 10 o'clock right here, three by five. I am out.